Okay, now for our filament. Now the filament Okay, now this is the stem where our socket will go. So it'll be sitting on there about like so. So we're going to have it cut off about there. So we'll make the end of this uh, filament stick right about there. So we've got to come up about a quarter of an inch on the filament wires here to put our filament. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come up a quarter of an inch and then I'm going to leave about maybe oh, 3 sixteenths of an inch to make the filament bend. Okay. Now, we, the, these are round wires, so if we're going to crimp that filament, we, we can't really make a good crimp with round wires. You know, if you try to crimp something with two round surfaces, they tend to pop around. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit them with a hammer and flatten them out so that we, we'll have a flat surface for that filament to be clamped in. And I'm just going to whack it. Okay, that just puts a flat on the ends of the wires where we're going to put the uh, filament. Okay, we're going to have to cut those a little bit. I'm going to go back a little bit more. Okay, that just flattens them out a little bit. Now, with this filament, we have a much tighter constraint on position than we did with, um, well, like the Fleming valve. So what I have to do here, I'm going to cut these off first, get them to the right length. Okay, we're going to crimp them like we did on the Fleming valve, and the filaments on the old tubes were, were crimped. So what we do is we just make us a little loop in the end of the wire. It's flat, so it's real easy to do. And that makes it work when we put the filament in there and, and crimp down. The flat surface just grabs that wire very well. Okay, you see we just have a little hook in the end. We'll put the filament wire in there and then use the squisher to squish it down. Now, the constraint we have on this is when we assemble this tube, that filament has to go up through this, evacu through this base stem. Now, we have to have that filament small enough to fit up through there. So we can't just spread this out arbitrarily. We have to have just a certain amount that we spread that out and um, okay that's going to be about it so we can't go much wider than that or else we won't be able to get that filament up into that uh, into that stem and that would be uh, you know, a situation oops too much There we go. Okay. For the filament, we're going to use 5 mil thoriated tungsten wire. This is available on the internet. The company, I think it's called Hypertron or Hypertronics, and they sell it on the internet. Just type in um, thoriated tungsten wire if you need some and um, on eBay and um, it'll pop up. Okay, we're just going to uh, slip the end of the wire into the loop, use the scrunchers, and just squish that down onto the wire. Okay, the wire's clamped now firmly in there, more or less. We want to make sure that it sticks through in a little bit. We'll bend that over so it won't pull out. We want a little bit sticking through so it doesn't pop out of there. If it pops out of there, then it's uh, a real mess to get it back in there again because you've got the you got the thing crimped shut. Okay, we're going to make that filament about the size of the uh, of the inner plate. Okay, I'm just going to grab that and bend it. Okay, now I'm going to take the squishers. Oops, that clamps come loose here. And we'll reach over and squish it. Okay, so that was squished on there. Now we're going to cut that off. Okay, that gets our 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to take that wire, that filament wire, we're going to wrap it around the crimp. I think you can probably see that filament wire. That's our filament. The exact length is not uh, that critical. If you're trying to make all your filaments to be exactly a certain voltage, then um, you got to be pretty careful in the length. But uh, my filaments all wind up between um, 2 and 3 volts. Um, you know, you use your filament rheostat in your circuit. That's why you have a filament rheostat uh, to adjust that filament. You have to have that anyway, so it makes it to where the filament isn't that critical. Now, we still don't have those filament wires really in there. I mean, it, it's, you know, they're in there, but that's about all. There have been cases where they uh, don't contact after a while. So what I'm going to do, I've got the welder set to about 20 amps, and I'm just going to do a quick pop on them. And that just goes ahead and, and welds that filament. So now, I mean, that filament is contacted on it. It isn't going to form... Uh, any problem uh, later on down, down the way and um, come loose on us, which would be uh, you know, very, very nasty, have a completely finished tube and a filament not contacting inside. I've had that happen once before. Okay, and that's our filament. Okay, that gets us plate filament which will come in from the other side. The next thing to do is put a getter and seal the tube off. Okay for the getter I've taken an old tube here and I popped it and I'm going ahead and I'll pull the getter out of it. <coughs> the getters in these things are not flashed all the way. I mean they, they don't hit them to the point to where they completely run out of material. So, um, you know, there's still plenty of getter material left. I have had some of them that have not flashed very well. It's like they almost used it up. So I make sure when I, when I get them, I, I go ahead and look at them with a magnifying glass first to make sure that they have plenty of getter material left in them. You wind up with a tube with no getter in it, and, you know, over the years it'll, it'll gas up. Okay, that's our getter. And looking at it with a magnifying glass, it is packed with getter material, so this one's got plenty left in it. Now this particular uh, design of tube, what we're going to do, we're going to put the getter right up at the top so that it doesn't stick down in here and show. We don't want to have that getter in there to ruin the appearance of the tube. So we're going to put it right up at the top there so that the getter material goes up into the, into the uh, uh, base stem. And that way, um, we don't spoil the looks of the audion. The original audion didn't have a getter, so we don't want to have a, have a getter sit there and uh, spoil the looks. Okay, we'll go ahead and weld us a little piece of wire onto the getter to, to hold it. Okay, now looking at it, the getter has to be up about five-eighths of an inch from the top of the plate. And it's on there. It's going to go right down through the center of the getter and it'll be positioned like so. All right, the next thing to do is to seal the tube shut. Both mounted in one chuck. We've got the air hose hooked onto the back of it with our, our bearing so that we can pressurize the inside when we need to. We've got the elements connected up in the wire holder on the other side, and the lathe holds it all perfectly aligned. Now, the first thing um, we have to do, um, we need an evacuation stem, which I haven't prepared yet. Uh, I'm just going to take a piece of Pyrex tubing 
and seal the end of it off, and that'll be our uh, evacuation step. Okay. We'll be used putting that on the bottom of the tube when we get it uh, sealed off. But we need to have that ready. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to seal the base onto the tube. Okay, once we get the base sealed onto the tube, then we'll put the evacuation stem on it. Okay, that'll get the bottom end of the tube taken care of. Okay, once you, first we're going to go ahead and heat the tube up a little bit with the annealing torch. We, we don't have to heat it a lot. I mean, it's Pyrex and I have to help it along a little bit with the torch. Alright, we're starting to flare, so we're okay. I'm going to heat it up pretty good here so that we're ready to go. Alright. What I'm going to do first is I'm just going to take one point on there and get the glass sealed, and then I'm going to make sure the alignment is perfect. place on the other side. All I'm doing is taking the flare and sticking it to the base. And I'm just going to use a little bit of pressure, and I'm going to heat it, and just kind of puff the, um, just kind of puff that glass out to make it nice and even. the glass is nice and smooth and even around there. Okay, the next thing to do is we need the evacuation stem on there. Alright, this is cooled off now. We have it sealed off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to heat a spot on the base and I'll blow a hole in the tube and then we'll seal the, the evacuation stem on there. Okay, um, this is the limit for the 15 minute uh, YouTube um, um, thing. Uh, go to part four and we will resume by putting the evacuation stem on the uh, envelope.